Uh, to answer that question, one has to divide food products into those which are grown extensively and those which are grown intensively. For the extensive crops like rice, wheat and corn, we wouldn't expect those to have a major role for urban food security. Now, intensive crops like vegetables, and here we're talking about a whole range of vegetables from tomatoes to chilies to uh, cucurbits and even uh, certain kinds of herbs, those don't require much land and water. Now, these are the crops that lend themselves to very intensive cultivation using a variety of, of technologies and modalities. Uh, for example, uh, if space is a limitation, one could considerably think of vertical growing, vertical plants, vertical pots, okay, to reduce space. And the other new technology, of course, you know, is uh, the use of aeroponics, where one would actually grow plants without soil and water on rooftops to maximize the exposure to sunshine, because sunshine is so essential for, for vegetable growth. Yeah? And also on rooftops, you will get away from, from common pest problems on rooftops. Okay? So I would say vegetables. Now, apart from plants, the other possibility are fish. Uh, there, there are quite a few cities around the world now where there's within the city ponds and also cages in canals uh, that actually grow freshwater fish. Tilapia is a good example. Tilapia or St. Peter's fish. It's a very common food fish, very hardy fish. It survives on its own even without feed on algae that's naturally generated. Uh, I've traveled to parts of the Philippines where urban dwellers grow catfish and tilapia in combination in ponds in very confined environments. Okay? And they would grow enough for themselves and house them for sale. Okay? So just, those are just two examples. And then we heard during this, this meeting, examples from China, where inner city folks are actually growing chicken, okay? uh, where they've been able to get rid of the pollution problems. Uh, so innovation, a lot more research that leads to new technologies, I think we'll certainly see new ways that allow us to, to practice urban agriculture and horticulture. I think the question of self-sufficiency you know, is one that has to be addressed you know, at several levels. One is the individual level, the other is the community level. Uh, at the individual level, I don't think it's possible to have self-sufficiency because all of us, you know, our diet comprises so many different items. Okay? Uh, at the community level, it may be possible to be totally self-sufficient in say vegetables, okay? where you can have partners in the community specializing in the growing of different kinds of vegetables. Okay? Because vegetables have different lifespans. Now, I can't imagine an individual or single household growing a whole range of vegetables, okay, which mature at different times. That will require a pretty big tract of land to do that, even within the city. But at the community level, yes. Uh, where there's, you know, a kind of a modern form of barter trade maybe occurring. Now we see some of these community gardens now within urban areas, they have become quite self-sufficient okay, in small groups. Yeah? So, yeah, uh, I think self-sufficiency in vegetables certainly can occur. But we will always have to buy the staples from outside the cities. Okay, the rice, the wheat and the corn. Okay. Yeah.